My name is Rob Clapper. I'm the president of Ashworth College and James Madison High School, and I am absolutely delighted to welcome you guys, all of you, to our 2014 commencement ceremony. So I'm going to kick things off, and I'm going to spend about five minutes, and I promise not a whole lot longer than that. I'm going to do a few intros, a few thank yous, share a few thoughts. So first, uh, to get us started, I would like to recognize the people within the Ashworth and James Madison community who have worked so hard to help put an event like this together. And so I'm sure all the graduates and the families appreciate all of the hard work and the long hours that these folks have put in. So let's please give them a hand. I also want to extend my appreciation, my gratitude to our entire team, all of our staff, uh, the people who work so hard and contribute in so many different ways to help our school be successful, and more importantly, to help our students be successful. Will all of our staff, including our faculty and instructors, please stand up so we can recognize you? Also, one of the key things that we do at Ashworth and James Madison is help our students achieve their dreams. Part of what we do is, as a school is we try to help others achieve their dreams as well. So just a few weeks ago, uh, a lot of people from our team were out working at Habitat for Humanity so we can make the same difference in other people's lives that we do in our students' lives. And so a round of Applause, please, for those folks who work so hard at Habitat for Humanity. And I'm, I'm happy to say that Ashworth was actually the very first school to have, and a very first, sorry, online school to have a Habitat for Humanity uh, chapter. So now I'd like to recognize some of you. And we'll start off with our active and former military graduates. If you would please stand you and your families, so you could be recognized. And what you do is so important to this group, to all of us, to protect our way of life, our values, and everything that we hold so dear. So please do stand. <laughs> Next, we'll all, that means everyone, all of the friends and family who are here, who have supported our students through their studies. We appreciate the support you've given them at Ashworth, and we can be pretty sure that your graduates, even if they don't always tell you, we can be pretty sure that they appreciate it as well. So if you would please stand so we could recognize you as well. All family and friends who help. So now that I'm done with the thank yous, I'd like to turn to the real reason that we're here today. It's to congratulate our students, or really should I say our graduates, on their wonderful accomplishments. So as president, I want you to know on my behalf, but on the behalf of my entire staff, my entire team, how thrilled, how proud we are to be here today and to be able to celebrate and recognize your graduation and your achievements. Over 10,000 students graduated from Ashworth over the last year, and about 300 of you are here today to celebrate this accomplishment. I talked to many of you earlier, and I'm not going to get everybody's location and country quite right, but I think we have folks here from Sri Lanka, Venezuela, uh, around the world, South Africa. Uh, where else? Some other countries? Okay, Krinkos, Caicos, Bahamas. Detroit kind of counts. Thank you. So, and also almost all 50 states. So what states? 
Okay. I think that covers it all. Is there anybody, anybody here from Georgia? Thought that might be the case. No matter where you're from, no matter how far you've traveled, you guys have all come a really long way. And obviously I mean that more than in just your travels. You've come a, lo a long way in your studies and in helping to get to where you are today. So I'm sure you are incredibly proud of what you've accomplished. You should be. We are all very proud of you. You've worked hard. You're now joining a group of roughly 300,000 students who have graduated from James Madison and Ashwood College, and you are part of our family and are part of our community, and we're deeply honored and gratified to have you as part of our group. You know better than virtually anyone in this room, distance education, not so easy, right? It's hard and it's hard work. You have to overcome a lot of other hurdles, a lot of challenges, a lot of obstacles. And even though we help you gain an education, or we would say on your terms, we know that completing your studies requires great drive, great discipline, great perseverance, and qualities that each of you clearly, clearly possess. So you can be proud of your diploma, proud of your certificate, proud of your degree. It signifies signifies a meaningful, accredited, and recognized accomplishment. Very well done. So what we're here today to do is to celebrate your success and to celebrate the hard work that you have done. So we are so incredibly proud of you, all of us at James Madison, all of us at Ashford, all of us in this room and your extended community, so proud of what you have done, the class and the graduates of 2014. So, so we hope that in some way that we have helped bring learning, wisdom, perspective to your lives. And with that, what you have gained here, the knowledge, the experience, the wisdom, will help you find and pursue your greatest passion, whatever passion that is for each of you. So I wish you much continued happiness, much continued success in whatever you decide to do. And again, while we congratulate you as graduates, we're very proud to have you as graduates, we're very proud now to have you as our alumni. And so this is not a goodbye, you're part of our community. And with that, we will move on with the program and I'm absolutely delighted to present our next speaker, uh, who is Lisa Rutsky, our Vice President of Education. Lisa? sure how to make this down. I'll just leave it right there. Well, I'm very, very honored to share this day with all of you, graduates, families, and friends. You might feel a little bit nervous right now, but this is the time to relax. This is the tests are over, classes are completed, and it's time to celebrate your accomplishments. And we're all very, very proud, as President Clapper said. You know, there's a saying, more people worry about the future and prepare for it? Well, all of you, of course, are the notable exception. The fact that you're here today indicates that you've worked hard to prepare for your future. You made a decision to follow a path that required you to study and sacrifice. And today, you should have the feeling of a job well done. As our president, Rob Clapper, said, distance education is not easy. Many of you studied between jobs after dinner early in the morning but you made it work. Even though we hadn't met each of you face to face prior to today, I want you to know that you, our students, have been and will continue to be at the heart of every decision we make for our school. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our keynote speaker. Dr. Leah Matthews is the Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Distance Education and Training Council. DETC is recognized by the U.S. Department of Education and the Council for Higher Education Accreditation. The DETC Accrediting Commission currently accredits over 100 distance education institutions serving more than two and a half million students. We're proud to have one of the largest distance education institutions accredited by the DETC. 
and we're very honored to have Dr. Leah Matthews with, as our keynote speaker today. President Clapper, faculty and administrators, distinguished graduates and honored guests, I am honored and delighted to be here today on the occasion of your commencement to celebrate with you on your marvelous achievements. Your achievement earning a degree from this institution is in my view extraordinary because it takes an extraordinary combination of discipline, self-motivation, intellectual persistence, and determination to be a high achieving distance education student. And by earning your credential today, you've already proven that you have the capabilities that are highly sought in today's workplace. I've taken online coursework and courses and much of my own academic preparation, and I have to say that for me, distance education was the most challenging. So my admiration for you today, graduates, is quite heartfelt. I acknowledge also that the reason you're here today is because you wanted something more, didn't you? You wanted something more for yourself, for your future, for your family, and for your career. The theme of more is on display a lot. It's in some rather enjoyable commercials recently by AT&T. Have you seen them? Have you seen the one where the AT&T executive gathers together a focus group of five and six year olds? Have you seen that one? And he says to them, who thinks more is better than less, right? And they all raise their hand. They all want to participate. They all want to play. And so the AT&T executive calls on a six year old girl and he says, can you tell me why more is better than less? Now, I tried to transcribe what she said. I'm going to give this my best shot. Now, you can look it up on YouTube for your own version, but, but here's what I think she says. More is better than less because if stuff is not less, then it's less stuff. Then you might want to have some more, but your parents won't let you because there's just a little bit, and we want more, we want more because we really like it. We want more. And then, then the executive, the executive solemnly nods and says, I follow you. Right? <laughs> and then the AT&T voice comes on and says, it's not complicated. More is better than less, right? Well, I like more. I'll admit it. I'd like more days like this celebrating the accomplishments of distance education. Um, I'd like more A&T and T bars on my phone, <laughs> right? I'd like more days at the beach with my children. I'd like more of those big chocolate sundaes we had last night after dinner, Rob, right? A, a friend of mine, his name's Brian, and he wanted more time with his father in our hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And so uh, he drove up from Washington, D.C. to celebrate his father's 82nd birthday. They had a great time, and Brian came on home to Washington but he found that the police were waiting for him. And they said, is your name Brian Kraus? Yes, answered my friend. Is your father Ted Kraus? Yes, said my friend Brian. Well, your father has been in an automobile accident. Now Brian knows his dad only drives 20 miles an hour, but this time his father fell asleep at the wheel or had some kind of medical emergency with his foot on the accelerator. He slammed into a tree going 60 miles per hour. It totaled the car and sent Ted to the emergency room. My friend Brian turned his car around and drove right back to Pittsburgh. He drove all night and when he got to the hospital, he saw tubes and equipment everywhere he saw nurses coming in and out, and he thought, this can't be good. He went to his father's bed. He took his father's hand, and he said, simply, Dad. His father opened his eyes and said, Brian, where's my wallet? <laughs> You're going to be okay, Dad. <laughs> right? And you know that feeling. Graduates, I know you know this feeling when you've been on the edge of something really difficult, a challenge, a risk, 
and you took the bold move to get yourself more, a tough decision, and then you find it's okay. All of you have more of that ahead of you. Because upon your graduation, you will make decisions about entering a profession and career-changing moves that will require you to demand more of yourselves and that will take no small measure of boldness to get there. There's going to be a looming exam. There's going to be a looming credential that you're going to need to pursue. And you're going to get there because this institution has prepared you to do that. I want to tell you about inspiration. I want to tell you about a father who was trying to find a way to spend more quality and meaningful time with his son. Now, his son is 43 years old now, but when his son was born, something went horribly wrong. He was born brain damaged, unable to move his arms and legs. And when he was nine months old, the doctors told his parents, this boy, his name's Rick, that not only was he paralyzed from the neck down, but he was an intellectual vegetable. The doctors recommended to his parents that they institutionalize him. Now his parents didn't listen. They took Rick home. They loved him. They raised him. They integrated him into their family with their other children. They educated him. They helped him learn how to communicate with a computer keyboard that had one button in the wheelchair by the side of Brian's, I'm sorry, on the side of Rick's head. And so he would tap his head to the side to type a message. Can you imagine tapping one letter at a time to communicate? Now, when a young man in the neighborhood had had an accident and the community wanted to have a fundraising event, Rick typed a message to his father, I want to participate in this event. Well, the event was a five-mile race. Rick's father said, I'll try, son. Now, the challenge was that Rick's father hadn't done much exercise in a very long time. He could barely run a mile, let alone five. But he was determined to try. So he pushed Rick in his wheelchair for five miles. It took his father everything he had to make it. And when they crossed the finish line, he was dead last. <laughs> it took him two weeks to recover. But what happened next was an incredible journey that has inspired millions of people. Rick sent his message to his father that said, Dad, when we were running in that race together, I didn't feel like I was disabled. So Rick's father committed himself more to anything he ever imagined. And so as of today, they have run 85 marathons, 212 triathlons where Rick's father tows him in a raft and then pushes him on a bicycle with a special seat made for the handlebars. The best marathon time they recorded in 1992 was 35 minutes off the world record. He has pulled Rick up mountains on snow skis. He has climbed mountains with Rick on his back. And Rick, because of this inspiration, went on to graduate from high school. And then he graduated from Boston College, where he now works in the computer laboratory, helping to develop a system where paralyzed people can control devices using their eyes. This year, Rick and his father completed their 24th Boston Marathon. The father and son together is called Team Hoyt, and you can Google it, and you can watch the video of this marvelous story. Rick writes that his father is the greatest man in the world, and it may be that his father is great, but it is as a team that Rick and his father inspire us. They inspire us to reach for more, to do more, and to be more. A chief operating officer of a big company wanted more for her employees. And she lit a firestorm through two speeches and a TED Talk. When she did the TED Talk, she was asked to write a book, and she wrote a book called Lean In. Do you know it? By Sheryl Sandberg. She's the CEO and the COO of Facebook. And in Lean In, she's demanding that women take more leadership roles in the world. 
She says that in parliaments around the world, only 13% are represented by women, and in the boardroom, only 13%. And in the nonprofit world in the US, which tends to be friendlier to women, it's just 20%. And what she's saying is that it's time for women to lean in in a career progression that often depends on taking risks and engaging in ways that are bold, advocating for oneself. When Cheryl wrote the book Lean In, she's inviting women to take the bold move to lean into places they didn't think they belonged. Now, I mentioned there was a firestorm. I was part of that firestorm. When I first read the book, I was indignant. Yeah, I am leaning in. All right, thank you. I have a career. I have a family. I've been working on my education. I am leaning in. But the more I thought about it, am I? And graduates, are all of you prepared to lean in? Are you prepared to push yourself now harder than you ever have before? So here's what I want for you today, graduates. I want you to live boldly. I want you to push yourselves hard. Every story you've ever connected with, every leader you've ever admired, everything you've ever accomplished is the result of you taking action. So nudge yourself. Nudge yourself out of that comfort zone and don't hold back. Bradley Whitworth says, you have a choice. You can be the active hero in your own life like Rick Hoyt. Taking action to lean in is the antidote to apathy and cynicism, and you'll make mistakes. But at the end of the day, you'll be judged by what you accomplished and your boldness and not by your stumble. Good things happen to those who wait, they say. But I say, better things come out to those who go get them. Graduates, thank you for having me speak to you today. <laughs> Honored to be here. Thank you.